Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you want to install mods for your seven days to die gaming experience, you're in luck. Today, I will cover adding overhaul mods and modlets for seven days to die for the PC. I will also show you where you can get your mods and ways to unarchive your downloads. So let's get into it. Insane in the brain. Yeah. Where do we get mods? I'll cover three locations to get mods. 7 days to die mods.com, Nexus Mods, and using the 7 days to die mod launcher by Sphere2. The first place I check for overhaul mods and modlets is 7 days to die mods.com. I like this site because it's simple and easy. Open the page, find the mod, and download it. It's pretty simple. Another great place to get mods is Nexus Mods. I've used Nexus Mods for other games and it's always been reliable. One thing to remember about Nexus Mods is you'll need to create an account and log in to download anything. And finally, using the 7 Days to Die Mod Launcher by Sphere2 is another great place to get mods. If you're using the Mod Launcher, this is probably the easiest, most efficient way to manage modlets and overhaul mods. Now, let's cover installing mods without the mod launcher. Pro tip, create new installs for your modded instances. This allows you to keep your base install from Steam separate from your modded ones. If you choose not to create new instances for your mods or don't have room on your storage drive, you can mod your original install. Just be prepared to reinstall 7 Days to Die if your install becomes corrupted. There's also a risk that an update to 7 Days to Die may cause some mods not to work until the mods are updated to match. This is how to make a fresh instance. On your storage drive, create a new folder. If you're not sure what to call it, call it 7D2D modded, like this. Next, find your base installation. Standard Steam install location is C, Program Files x86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, seven days to die. Using control A followed by control C, grab the entire seven days to die folder contents and copy them to your newly created mod folder, 7D2D modded. Click inside the folder and press control V. Once completed, you'll need to create a mods folder in the root of the install if it's not there. If you are new to doing this sort of thing, look for these files. 7 days to die.exe and 7dlauncher.exe. Create the mods folder there. Once you have your mods folder created, you're ready to download your mods. Pro tip When selecting mods, check each one to see if there are any other required mods to make it work. Using 7 days to die mods.com, select a mod, then download it. You want to scroll all the way to the bottom and look for the download that looks like this. I prefer to download my selected mods to the downloads folder and then move the archive to the mods folder. That's where I unarchive the downloaded mod. Use control X on your download file, then move to your mod folder and then use control V to copy it there. Now let's cover unarchiving your downloads. Files you download will most likely be zip files. Occasionally you may run across other file types, like RARs. When unarchiving zip files, you can use Windows to do that for you. If the file type is a RAR or something else, I found a neat website that can change those zip files for you. It's fast, and most importantly it's free, and you don't need to install anything. It's called extract.me. I've also provided links below if you prefer other options. Check out these URLs. Important note, if your unarchived mod has a data folder, you'll need to move all of its contents to the data folder in the root install. Just copy the contents into the data folder and you're all set. Now that I have a few mods zip files in our mods folder, I can unzip them using Windows Extract. 
right-click a file to unarchive and select Extract All. Once you have finished this for all your mods, you can safely delete any archive files. I will also remove this added text by Extract Me. Then finally, to complete this method, each mod folder has a folder with the same name. Click once on this folder, use Control X, go back to the mods folder and use Control V. This eliminates the redundant folder. Do this for each mod. You can now launch 7 Days to Die and enjoy your new mods. Now let's install mods using the Mod Launcher by Sphere 2. Once on this page, scroll down and find your OS, then click Download. Once downloaded, move the zip file to the location you want to run the Mod Launcher and unarchive the file. I move my file using Control X. I'll also move my file to Drive E and then use Control V to paste it there. Once moved, unarchive the zip file in this location. Once done, the next thing you may want to do is make a shortcut on your desktop to run the mod launcher. Find the modlauncher.exe file, right click, and send to desktop create shortcut. Now we can launch the mod launcher. Using the mod launcher, we can install individual mods called modlets or overhaul mods. To install modlets, from the main page, click install my mods. From the installation wizard, you'll be asked to copy your game from local or download from Steam. Easiest way to move forward is to copy from local. To copy from local, you'll need to provide the path to your Steam install. Again, the common path is C, Program Files, x86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, 7 Days to Die. Mine is different. If you choose to install from Steam, you'll need to provide your Steam credentials. You can also choose the version to install by clicking the version box. After the copy is complete, you'll be able to install modlets. At the top, you should see My Mod. From this page, select the plus sign next to Modlets. On the Modlet Management page, you'll need to refresh modlets for them to show up as selections. Once that is completed, find a mod on the left and select it. In the center, validate your mod is selected and click Install. When you are done adding mods, click Close Modlets in the upper right hand corner. To play your game with your added mods, click Play from the My Mod page. To install an overhaul mod, make sure you are on the main page of the Mod Launcher and select Install an Overhaul. From this page, Discover New Mods, in the upper left hand corner, select the version of 7 Days to Die you are installing for. Note, this must match the version you will be copying or downloading. Then select the overhaul mod you want to install and click install in the top center. This will take you to the installation wizard page. You'll be asked to copy your game from local or download from Steam. The easiest way to move forward is to copy from local. Provide the path to your Steam install. Once completed, you'll be on the overhaul mod page. Click play to launch 7 Days to Die with that overhaul mod. Note, the mod launcher will need separate install instances for each overhaul mod that you install. That's all I'm covering today. I'll cover server installs in a shorter video another time. Leave any questions and comments below. I hope you found this content useful and you enjoyed the video. Support me by subscribing below and hit that like button. It's free and it helps me out. Thanks for watching and have a great week. Yeah.